Welcome back to Wired and Active. In order to get an international perspective on e-jihad and its ramifications, we'll talk to people who matter on cyberspace. We have with us on the line Mr. Tim Pippard, who is the content editor for Sentinel Security Assessments at Jane's Information Group, which is one of the oldest security assessment companies in the world. Thank you for joining us. You're very welcome, sir. It's nice to be with you. So can you tell me how has internet helped these uh, jihadi organizations uh, to disseminate their message to the global audience? Well, certainly since the US-led invasion of Afghanistan in late 2001 and the subsequent destruction of Al-Qaeda's physical sanctuary, the group has morphed into quite a decentralized network of alliances and individuals. And I think it's important to note that the parallels between how we see Al-Qaeda operating now and how we see the internet operating are very obvious. So I think for a for a global jihadist movement such as Al-Qaeda, which is denied a physical home, the use of the internet has become a relatively obvious um, tool by which the organization can retain relevance and continue to pose a threat. And, that, and we see that with other organizations uh, of the jihadist bent as well. So can you tell our audiences when was this trend first detected and uh, what has been the rate of its growth? And could you tell us about their popularity on the World Wide Web? Uh, of course. I think while we, while we now understand that the Internet is a, is a central weapon of Al-Qaeda and other militant groups, uh, understanding the precise scope of that community is still quite difficult. And I think since, since Al-Qaeda launched its first website uh, back in the late 1990s, it was a site called www.almeida.com, uh, we've certainly seen a rapid growth of expansion in terms of the number of sites that are, that are popping up. Around about September the 11th, 2001, we estimated but there were roughly a thousand jihadist websites in existence, and that number has grown at, at this point to to be in the tens of thousands. What we do know with more certainty is that these sites are relatively popular. Now, one of the most prominent sites associated with Al Qaeda is a is a site called Al Ekala, uh, which claims to be the most popular jihadist forum online, with somewhere in the order of 50,000 members. Uh, it's also a site, incidentally, that carries a number of communiques on a regular basis from Al Qaeda's senior leadership. Uh, including uh, the deputy Al Zawahiri. And what sort of activities have you witnessed on these jihadi websites while monitoring them? Is there a pattern that you see? Certainly. Uh, in terms of the type of activity, you can basically categorize what we're seeing into four types of sites and then four types of content. So as far as the types go, really jihadist activity consists of either general websites, blogs, forums or online magazines. General websites, uh, they serve as information repositories. Uh, and, and that's from an analytical and also a law enforcement perspective. They're generally less compelling than the blogs and forums, which tend to allow for much more interaction between users and webmasters, uh, as well as a medium for rapid and flexible communications, of course. Now, as far as the types of content goes, uh, again, this is really a mix of ideological, strategic, political and tactical material. Now, all are important elements when you're trying to understand the role the Internet plays in propagating the jihadist message. But it's the tactical content that's most concerning from a law enforcement standpoint, uh, primarily because there's now a vast library of operational material available online covering topics such as bomb making, using claymore mines, IED construction, guerrilla warfare tactics, and so on. Uh, although Arabic remains the dominant language of jihadist, internet activity. There's been a visible growth in non-Arabic language sites, particularly English and Pristu, but also in Thai, Malay and Turkish as well. Now, organizations such as yourself perform a key role by monitoring such websites and passing the relevant information to either the law enforcement agencies or the general public. Now, what does this process entail? Uh, of course. Uh, the first step is, is obviously our monitoring analysis effort. And, and since about mid-2006, uh, the organization I work for, Jane Strategic Advisory Services, has been engaged in, in a fairly in-depth uh, and extenuous research effort aimed at identifying, examining, and assessing around about 400 Arabic, English, and Pristu language websites, really to understand the radical nature of, of the online content. Now, beyond that monitoring effort, the, the mechanisms by which we disseminate those findings to, to key law enforcement, defense, and commercial sectors is very much client-driven. Uh, depending on their specific requirements. So, for instance, some of our clients have operational needs that demand daily updates on jihadist online activity. So what we do is create 
virtual intelligence cells dedicated to providing them with this type of, of coverage. Um, we're also frequently engaged by partner and other organizations to present our findings at conferences focused on jihadist ideology uh, and are often invited also to brief smaller groups of intelligence analysts on particular aspects of the global jihad. Thank you for talking to us. And now before we end our show, let me introduce you the latest segment of our show which is called The Wired Pick of the Week. Here, we troll through the local blogosphere in order to search for pictures that make an impact on our team. This week's picture comes to us from the blog All Things Pakistan. The caption to the picture is, A young Pakistani boy internally displaced walks across a bridge separating the camp at the Yar Hossein UNHCR camp in Chota, Lahore on July 6, 2009 in Swabi district of Pakistan. One is flooded with emotions when seeing this picture and to find out that over 3 million people are affected in their own homes is an eye-opener for anyone. Let us all help lower their sufferings by donating generously for our brothers and sisters who are in need. As we love to interact with our followers, we are on Twitter with the hashtag Wired and Active. We are receiving a steady following, so come join us in the debate. Also, if you are on Facebook, then become a fan of our group namely Wired and Active. And do check us out on YouTube by going on to the channel The Dawn News Pakistan, where you will find all our episodes. Also, we here at Wired and Active will be blogging at the dawn.com blog. So start blogging there and who knows, you may be on TV. Lastly, if you have any feedback or suggestions, do email us at wiredandactive at dawnnews.tv. So that's the end of our show for today. I'm your host, Wes Mangalwala, telling you all to become activists on the internet, but not of the radical kind. See you next week.